I believe we are frontiering. I believe there is that innovation spirit in education. The explore. There is the West yet still be won. There's frontiers yet to be established in education. I said it last night and I'll say it again. In fact, I just heard the word homestead. I just heard that word, homestead. I got to follow the Spirit. Now, I got to learn to hear by the Spirit. Not, no one's told me anything. I believe that's relevant for someone here. That word, homestead. It's like your home. Homestead. I see a couple hands here. We're just going to follow the leading of the Spirit. Is this okay? We want, Lord, whatever you want. Now, this is called the prophetic ministry. If you're new to this, I was talking about frontiering new things in education in this education conference. And two people raised their hands. What does it mean for you? We'll start back here. I'll start and then we'll come up. I'm just going to follow the Spirit. It may be, the word may be for both of you. I don't know either one of you. I don't know you. Is that correct? The lot where I lived for 49 years prior to be called here I wow. just last last September you just okay so you lived at Homestead Avenue in Garden City New York Garden City yes <laughs> now wait just a minute I'm talking about the garden I'm preaching about the Garden of Eden and two trees that are in the garden and I'm talking about homesteading frontiers, developing new frontiers, the explorer spirit. And you lived how many years? 49. 49, which is one shy of 50, which is a jubilee, a new beginning. So are you here in the 50th year? Yes. Yes. I will 50 be. is the jubilee. There is a jubilee coming to education where we're going to get everything back that institutional education has stolen from our youth. I don't know you, correct? We've never spoken as far as I know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Is that true? We don't know each other. That's right. You haven't told me anything. Nobody's told me. I didn't know you'd be here. <laughs> On the 50th year Jubilee. I'm thinking of my $50 bill dream. See, this is how God speaks to you. You hear and listen by the Spirit. You can learn to teach this way. If you start a Christian school, if you're starting homeschooling, if you're starting a private school, a micro school, you can learn to teach your children by the Spirit more than they can learn by the ear. The Lord says his favorite TV show is I Love Lucy. <laughs> That's my name. That's your name. <laughs> your name is Lucy. <laughs> wow. I love Lucy. What a message from heaven. Wow. The glory's on you right now, ma'am. The Holy Spirit's on you. You have a generational inheritance. I love Lucy. <laughs> that is so awesome. I'm going to do like Justin Perry, my good friend. That's all I got. I'm going to wait till I get something else. He did that a couple Sundays ago. Homestead. 49 years. Yes. Yes. This is the 50th year and you come here. I think there's a prophetic message in that. God has brought some of you here to experience a new beginning of education. 
whether or not it's to move here, you're here for this conference because there's a jubilee, a new beginning, a, a undoing, a new start. The jubilee debts were paid off. Those that were in bankruptcy, they were forgiven. If they lost their property, it was given back. I feel like God is saying to those of you that have cared enough to be invested in this new era education conference, your children and grandchildren that have wandered and strayed from the Lord are on his heart and they're a priority on his mind and he's going to bring many of them back to the Lord because you're invested in the education of a new generation. Praise God. So ma'am, I just say what you already know and that is new beginnings. New beginnings, new beginnings are over you. And just like I uh, brought you from... Uh, uh, 11 homesteads. Yes. Was yes. It, uh, there was more than one, or is that what's that mean? 11 homestead was my address. Okay, that was where you came from after 49 years. That's correct. You come here, move here for the 50th year, just moved here. And so, wow, new beginnings. New beginnings. That word is significant for someone else. I just, new beginnings. New beginnings. New beginnings. Anybody else that that word really resonates with you? New beginnings. Where's, uh, where's, um, since we're talking about Deuteronomy a little bit ago, you know, about his strength, his, his, uh, his vision was neither dim nor his strength abated. That was talking about 120 year old Moses. He didn't lose his vision. He didn't lose his strength or stamina. And he was 120. 120 is also symbolic of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There were 120 in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. There were 120 uh, musicians in Solomon's temple when the glory of God fell. Moses is in here, over here. So I see, I feel Moses' spirit over here, right back there. Okay, we're talking about Moses now. That's who I preached about tonight. Stand up. I can't see very well. Your name's Moses. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I'm just going to prophesy scripture to you and declare that no matter all the difficulty that you've been through, and all the hardship and the changes and the shifts and even those who have abandoned and betrayed you, you, God is not done with you and your strength is coming back to be restored and you will not lose spiritual sight. In fact, the Lord's gonna restore to you new spiritual sight you, and Jesus. you're gonna walk in a new prophetic anointing tonight, Thank sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. Brother Moses, and I love Lucy. Man, people wouldn't have believed it if you told them. In fact, there's a new grace package that God has for you in your ministry. I see new beginnings. Hallelujah. Thank new you, beginnings. Thank you, Lord. Let me just follow the Spirit. New Jesus. beginnings. I see upper room, 120, new beginnings. And before the third week of October, you're going to come into a new celebration. It's not going to be like the one that was before, but it's going to be a new kind of celebration because I feel like there's going to be some things that are going to come to pass in your family, promises that have been spoken from generations before that have not yet come to pass that you felt like that may not come through you but the Lord says he wants you to know that there's going to be some kind of new grace package be released into your ministry by the third week of October 2022 and it's going to be he said I hear a new kind of celebration Hallelujah. and I don't know what the old kind of celebration was but it's going to be a new kind of celebration and October is going to have a new meaning of month for you. 
And it's going to be a new beginning, a new start for your life and ministry and even restoration in your family, broken relationships that the enemy has brought and, and destruction to, and you have felt much grief and sorrow because of situations that you could not seem to redeem no matter how hard you tried. And even I see younger people, I see children that have been directly affected. But the Lord wants you to know the Jubilee that was for I Love Lucy is also for Moses. And what he did for her in the 50th year, he's going to do for you before the 120th year. He's going to do something special for you, sir, this year. Uh, October 24th is significant for you. It's my birthday. Okay. There's the third week of October. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands forward for Brother Moses, just like you did for I Love Lucy. And Lord, we just pray a promised land, not dying before he enters the promised land, but he's going to bring a movement of God and lead the people of God. Even out on the West Coast, says the Lord, I'm going to bring those from the West to the East and from the East to the West, and you will have the fighting spirit of George Washington with the name of Moses. I don't know what George Washington means or Washington means. I live in Washington State. You live in Washington State. So, Lord, we just pray. I spoke this morning about the anointing of George Washington. And I just pray that anointing, that fighting spirit, that fighting, that battle, the overcoming power to establish new frontiers, to see a new revolution for education. Restoration for the family, restoration for relationships, and also the Lord wants to do something in your body as well right now. The Lord wants to bring a healing to you regarding a situation that is not even very public, but the Lord is going to do it for you right now, sir, and he's going to bring a healing to more than one thing, but I see him doing something. I see him touching your back as well. I don't know why, but there's something that is, I see fire being released down your back in the name of Jesus. Receive it right now, even into your shoulders and your hips, and I declare also for the blood to be cleansed and the balance to come into balance. And Lord, I just pray for strength to be restored to him and a new grace package. Praise the Lord. Let's come back to I Love Lucy. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for what you're doing in Brother Moses. Thank you that his strength is not abated, neither has he lost vision. See, the Lord is this incredible storyteller. He can weave through my very sermon, Garden City, Brother Moses. I mean, some, the Jubilee, fit, some of the craziest stuff. I see you in a garden. Okay, something just hit you. I just came back because I was praying for Brother Moses and now I'm coming back to I Love Lucy. I saw you in a garden. You did. I want to build you a garden. It's that song by Jason Upton. It's been in my heart forever since I heard. And just fairly recent, I had opportunity to buy a piece of land. Wow. In the mountains. And I like to cultivate so it's for a garden. It is. So is there any way I could know you just bought property for something like that? There's no way. I about fell off the stage. I here. desire to build a garden. I desire to build a garden. You desire. I desire. Well, you're from Garden City. It would only make sense. Yes. You believe the Lord can give you even as a doorway to the Holy Spirit? You believe he can open up your spiritual senses? Oh, my. Are you ready for a visitation? Absolutely. You're going to begin to smell roses right now. Oh, oh Jesus, I receive. You're going to smell flowers right now. In the name of Jesus, I release that anointing over you right now. And God is going to give you a blueprint for his garden. 
There it is. I just saw something being released. The fragrance of heaven in the name of Jesus. Baruto Mora Sunday. Do you, do you, something's happening right there. You smell those roses? Do you smell it? You smell it? Now, now there's no way you can force that to happen. <laughs> My constant prayers. To, I just want his fragrance to, to be in me so I distill them. So now the Lord showed me your constant prayer. And you've even <laughs> wondered if he even was listening to you. And now he's revealing to me what you've been praying. Apparently he's listening. Smell those roses? Yes. I smell. Do you smell them? You smell them? Oh, the Holy Spirit. I, the woman behind you said, do you smell them? You smell the roses. And here's the beauty. The roses isn't a smell that something's died. It's the sign that something's born. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh. Man, I just felt the anointing come on me right there. There's a birthing taking place. Holy Spirit, move in this room right now. Your senses are being opened. That is a gateway to the angelic realm when you smell. Some people say, look, I want to encounter the angelic, the supernatural, and you, you only believe to see it. What if the Lord would allow you to taste and see that he's good? What if he would allow you to hear? What if he would allow you to smell? You know, your senses can become golden. You know why your senses are so important? They'll actually outlive your physical body. You don't believe me? Ask the rich man in hell. He wanted a drop of water he could taste. He was tormented in the flame he could feel. He saw Father Abraham from afar off he could see. Your senses are actually in your spirit man covered up by your carnal man. And God wants to make himself real to you. Whew. I tell you what, you just come from New York. New York, is that right? Yes. yes. Where is a woman named Miriam? Is Miriam here? I'm just going to stand on it. I just, Miriam. Maybe she's listening, but I just saw that in the spirit. Miriam. The word of the Lord for this Miriam is also just as it was for her from New York. God's going to bring her to South Carolina. There's a Miriam that's going to hear that, and you watch and see if she doesn't hear that that's a word from the Lord, we will hear reports of it. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I just saw that in the Spirit. The Lord says that there's also someone in this room who's trying to merit his favor, but it's only going to come by grace. Merit. I don't know if that's a name, merit, right there. Is that a last name? I don't think I know you. All right. What was it that the angel said to Mary? He said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. The Catholic version is a little different, but the biblical version, the grace of God is with you. And just like that, that, that grace of God is coming to you. And even though you're not that Mary, you are a woman before the Lord whom God has said he is going to open up to you a new realm in him, and it's not going to be by your natural identity, your last name merit. You can't earn it or deserve it, but you're going to get it by grace. Which is why your identity in Christ surpasses your identity in the flesh. And that's for all of you. What's your first name? Mary Ann. Okay, that's what I thought. Mary. Mary Ann. I saw that. Mary Ann. So, Lord, I just pray right now that there would come a grace upon you and your children. And I'm even praying for the Lord to bring healing also in your joints. 
and he also to give you a knee replacement? I've got a bandage on my knee. You got a what? I've got an ace bandage okay. on my knee. Okay, well, there you go. Lord, just heal that knee. And he's going to heal the other leg. There's an, there's an old ankle issue that he's also going to heal. Is that right? You yes. know what I'm saying? That's true, yes, on the other right. leg. Well, there's no way I could know that. Amen. Well, here's, here's what he's else going to do. I, I just see him touching your shoulders. Sometimes I see almost like needle-like pain that comes across the shoulder and the shoulder blades, and I feel like that he's just touching your nerves right now. You feel that? I just felt something. Does that make sense to you? Do you know what I'm talking about? The Lord's going to heal you right now of all of these afflictions. And serve the Holy Spirit's all over you right there. I just saw him. That, that amber light over you right there. Let me pray for you. Will you begin to pray in the Spirit if you know how? Come on, we need the touch of God. We need the touch of God. There it is. Glory. 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 New realms. New glory. New realms. New glory. Fire of God. Fire of God come. Fire of God come. Fire of God come. Glory to God. Let it come upon you and upon your household, upon your family, upon the next generation, and even those in the previous generation. The healing, saving power of God. It's for you too, ma'am. Rita kasabranda bashiki atopo rosonga marvedienda. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Receive it. Receive it. By grace, through faith. Receive it. There it goes. There it goes. Glory. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, somebody get a breakthrough here right now. God is doing something in this room. We just encountered a new dimension of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. 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 If you know how to pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Don't just pray in the natural. We're doing this. We're praying from the tree of life right now. Not just natural prayers according to what we know in the natural or what we need in the natural. Pray by the Spirit. 